Lord, we give God the best possible praise that you have for being a way maker. Come on, when I call the one you like this, put a praise on it. Way maker? What about miracle worker? He is my promise keeper. Light in the darkness. My God. That is who you are. Find two people and tell them he's all of that to me. He's all of that. He's all of that. He's always busy opening doors I don't see. Always busy taking care of me. When I'm sick, he heals me. When I'm broke, he put a little money in my pocket. When I'm hungry, he feeds me. When I need shelter, he's a roof over my head. When I'm confused, he's peace in the midst of my storm. When I'm down, he's my joy in my sorrow. When I'm concerned, he's my hope for tomorrow. Find two new people and tell them he's all of that to me. He's, he's all of that to me. He's a midnight rider for me. He's, he's my walking cane. He's my leaning post. He, he's bread when I'm hungry, water when I'm thirsty. He's all of that to me. What a mighty God we serve. If he ain't none of that to you, you ain't got to praise him with the rest of us. But for the 12 of us that know that everything that happened to me that was good, God did it. Come on, put a praise on it one time. Oh, you don't know like I know what he's done for me. <laughs> but he's all of that and more. And what a mighty God we serve. And I don't know about you, but I'm glad to be in the service one more time. Didn't have to let me live, but I'm glad to be in the service one more time. And I'm glad to see you in the service one more time. Glad that you had the mind and the strength to come to church today. I know somebody stayed at home today because they were tired from the weekend. But look at you, you're here. And even though your team lost, you're still here. Them bulldogs got stung yesterday, didn't it? But look at God, though. We can still come together. <laughs> we can still come together and thank God that we are here and kept alive by the grace of God. So wonderful to see your beautiful faces in the place on today. We thank God for you. If you are visiting with us today, we bless God for your presence. If you are members at another church, uh, we're just grateful that you are here visiting with us today. Please send our love back to your pastor, your leaders there, and uh, let them know that we're thinking about them and praying for them as well. But if you're here and you do not have a church home, don't have a church family, and uh, you've been praying about one, if the Spirit leads you to come be a part of our church family, I personally would be honored to be your pastor, and the FCC would love to be your church family. Can we give God praise for any guests, visitors, those that's watching us on Facebook, YouTube, wherever you may be, in city, out of city, in state, out of state. We're just glad to have you here with us uh, on today. All of our children who are 12 years of age and under our children's church uh, has been prepared for you. There's a lesson that's been prepared for you. Parents, guardians, if you would like to release your child to go, it's to my left and to your right. Uh, my aunt and cousin do an amazing job every week on teaching our children on a level that they can understand. Amen. Uh, they sacrifice being in the sanctuary for the sake of our children. And they go back and check it out on Facebook or YouTube or whatever uh, streaming service we have available and get the word that way but we're thankful to God for their commitment and dedication uh, to helping our children see Jesus as well amen I want to say a great big great big great big great big thank you to all of y'all man all of y'all for the past two Sundays uh, last week and week before last was absolutely amazing the turnout was phenomenal looked out there and saw all y'all faces uh, it did my heart so good. All the help, the disciples ministry, the music ministry, our media team, our membership services, just a lot of daddy, everybody was there. And I thank y'all so very much. So let's give ourselves a great big hand for actually uh, manifesting uh, our series for this month, which has been on supporting. And it is not often, it is not usual at all uh, that uh, 
church will shut down or suspend its services for one week, let alone two weeks, um, to go off and do that. And uh, both of those pastors were just absolutely elated to have us there. Uh, haven't stopped talking about it uh, since since that time. And so I thank you. Y'all are that church. Uh, Y'all are that group of people. And I bless God for you every day of my life. Uh, I genuinely mean this from the very bottom of my heart. Um, that pastoring you guys is a joy to my life. So I thank y'all so much. You don't know what y'all do for me. Y'all know what y'all do for me. Now that I'm 40, I'm real sentimental nowadays. So y'all pray for me. I, when I turn 41, I won't settle down a little bit. But for these next hundred or so days that I'm, I'm, I'm still 40, I'm going to be having moments like this. So just pull out the tissue or something if it feels like I'm getting to that place. But uh, I'm extremely grateful. Gratitude is my attitude when it comes to you guys. So thank you all so much for all that you do and all that you uh, will continue to do with the grace and help of the Lord. All right, I want to drop a word in your spirit today. It's going to be found in the Gospel of Luke chapter 5. Luke chapter 5 is our is our stopping point today. Anybody ready for the word? Luke chapter 5, and uh, we'll look at verses 1 through 7, I believe. 1 through 7. Yeah, for the sake of brevity, we'll do 1 through 7. If you would stand as we reverence the holy writ word of God. Luke chapter 5. Verses 1 through 7 for our attention. And it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Gennesaret and saw two ships standing by the lake. But the fishermen were going out of them and were washing their nets. Make sure you put a pen there. And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. Now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, Launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a draw. Simon answered and said unto him, Master, we toiled all night, all the night, and taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. And when they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes. You know it's a lot of fish when it says fishes. Because fish is plural. Look at just, just in case somebody didn't know, fish is already plural. Oh, Amen. But it was a great multitude of fish here, so their net break, and they beckoned unto their partners. Look at verse 7. It's cold-blooded. They beckoned unto their partners, which were in the other ship, that they should come and help them. And they came and filled both the ships so that they began to sink. I'm going to preach today uh, from our series, Supporting the Cause. I'm going to talk about, I'm going to need help with this. Look at somebody on your way to your seat and tell them, I'm going to need a little help with this. I'm going to need a little help with this. I'm going to need a little help with this. Most of us know this by now. But the God that we serve, I should have at least every witness in here on this one, the God that we serve is absolutely amazing. He's absolutely awesome. In fact, I'm gonna tell you how good God is. God is so awesome that every now and then, Throughout the course of our spiritual journey, he permits us blessings that are so auspiciously configurated that you'll actually find yourself needing help with the blessings to manage them. I don't know if you've ever, if you've ever been there but sometimes God moves in such a way that, Lord, I'm going to try to say this without, without tearing the club up, but sometimes he blesses you in such a way 
that when he does it, it makes you nervous. If, if, if you've never been there, I, I pray, I'm going to pray for you today that the Lord will do something like this for you so that you can know what I'm talking about and you can shout with the rest of us. But I, I pray that God would bless you so much so that when he does it, you will think he playing with you. I'm, I'm talking about the kind of blessing that you look up toward heaven and say, God, stop playing. May, 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 may he shower you with the kind of blessing that when he does it, you start blushing. Because oftentimes when we think about needing help, help is often flowing within the parameters of a problem that we have. And now I need help with this problem. Whether it's physically, I, I need help. I don't have the physical strength to, to go to the store. Will you go for me? I don't have the physical strength to lift this object. Will you assist me? And sometimes it's not physical, it's emotional. Sometimes we need help emotional. Sometimes you're sad, you're down if you're grieving, you're, you're depressed. There's things aren't going the way that you thought they would and you need help emotionally. Sometimes it's mentally or psychologically. Sometimes we need to just lay on the couch. Let somebody talk to us, talk us through some stuff. Mentally, it's just not clicking on all cylinders. You need somebody to help you. Sometimes it's financial. You just need a little help along the way. You need somebody to spot you $20 until you get on your feet. You know, it's, it's Monday. You don't get paid to Friday. Can you help hold me for four days? When we talk about help, we speak about help regarding an issue that we may have or a problem that we are dealing with. But God is so awesome that he finds a way every now and then in our lives to bless us with a blessing, watch this, that is so heavy that you need help with your blessing. If, if you can't say it, you can't have it, but somebody ought to throw up your hand and shout, God, give me one of them, give me one of them. Give, as a matter of fact, you can give me two of them things if you want to. I'm, I'm talking about the kind of blessing that I look at God and say, I can't handle this on my own. I, so, some of y'all ain't like me yet, but I, I, I'm crazy enough to believe that God will do something that you have to call your crew and, and you have to get your entourage together because when it comes in, it's coming in real big for you. May, may, may you go to the dealership and have to call somebody and say, bring somebody with you that can drop you off because when I leave today, I'm driving off the lot with two of them and I can't drive both of them. I need somebody to help get it back. High five your neighbor and say, I'm believing God for some of them blessings. Can you come and stay in my other house because I don't want it to be empty? Something like that happens in Luke chapter 5 and for all the theological minds, for all the theologians that's in the room that's going to be checking us out, that's going to be trying to critique and dissect this, I know that this is not the main point of the story. I know that. I've been preaching long enough to know that. But I am saying it's a major point. It ain't the main point. We'll get to that at the end. I, I, I can't not tell you what the main point is, but it's a major point. Have you ever been going somewhere like this? Say you're leaving from Birmingham and you're going to Atlanta. Atlanta is your destination. That's the main point that you're trying to get to. But you stop off at Bucky's. All right, the destination is not Atlanta. The, the destination is Atlanta, but I just want to tell you what happened when we stopped at Bucky's. This is the Bucky's of the text, and, 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 and Jesus, Jesus has been followed by, by a group of people. He's been followed by a multitude of people, and this is cold-blooded because what they are following him for is they simply want to hear him teach them the word of God. And I thought that was beautiful because most people who follow Jesus ain't following him for a word. They're following him for a sign. 
Most people that want Jesus, want Jesus for his miracles, but they were not following him asking for miracles. They were following him because they wanted his word. And can I say this to you, and this is going to bless you for the rest of your life. When you want the sign, he gives you a word. But when you crave the word, he'll give you the sign. I just said some y'all missed it. I ain't gonna even repeat it no more. Should have got it the first time I said it. Check this out. They're following him for the word, but in the end, they end up seeing the sign. I've learned the more words you get, the less signs you have to ask for. The less word I get, the more signs I have to ask for. So they're following him and they want a word from the Lord. And Jesus is walking by the lake of Gennesaret. Gennesaret, uh, Sea of Galilee. The uh, lake of Gennesaret, the word Gennesaret literally means heart. I thought that was interesting because Jesus really plays them a tune in this passage that is so beautifully sounded. He sees the people want him for the word and because they want him for the word, he walks by the lake and he sees a, a, a boat here at the lake that is not occupied by its owner. And Simon Peter is the owner of the boat. And, and Jesus just walks over to the boat. You got to get this. Because I believe that the blessing that is so heavy that he needed help with didn't just happen. It happened for a reason. Here's the reason I believe, here's one of the reasons. Jesus gets onto the boat and then he tells Simon, push the boat out into the water a little bit. You missed it. I'm gonna back it up, put it in rewind. Jesus walks over to the boat, steps onto the boat, turns to the owner of the boat and says, thrust me out into the water. Can I tell you why some of y'all wouldn't have got blessed? Because you would have looked and said, what you doing in my boat? First, you're going to step in my boat. Then you're going to turn to me and give me instructions to push you out into the water in my boat. If you're taking note, you might need to write this down. The first thing I see in this text as a reason why he gets a blessing that he needs help with is because of his peaceful willingness. Peaceful willingness. Jesus steps in his boat. Then he tells the owner of the boat, push me out further into the water in your boat that I'm using that I ain't even ask you for. He just steps on the boat, says nothing to the owner until he needs the owner to assist him in what he's doing in the owner's boat. And Peter pushes him into the water. I knew then, Lord help me, that God was getting ready to bless him because Peter didn't get an attitude when Jesus decided to use his boat. As a matter of fact, you ought to get glad that of all the boats in the water, he decided to get on your I'm getting ready to tell Isla all up today. The only reason you sitting in this room today is because he saw your boat and decided to step on it. It ain't because your boat was no better than anybody else. It ain't because of the side of town you grew up on. It ain't because your grades were better than everybody else in the class. Anybody in this room beside me can thank God that one day he decided to step up on my boat. I wasn't looking for him. I wasn't asking for him, but he looked beyond my fault and on my knee and just step onto the boat of my circumstance he says push me out into the water and he begins to teach the people in the boat that belongs to Simon that he never says can I use your boat he only says push me out into the water inside your boat I'm going to drop some in your spirit and I pray you carry it with you to your grave. To your grave. Willingness is the seed for blessedness. Watch this. Willingness is the seed for blessedness. Meaning this. You ain't always got to have it. 
But if you just be willing to let him. Can I tell you why? Can I tell you why I don't like going to some of y'all cousin them churches? Because it's certain seasons, it's certain moments that I be looking at them having them SMH moments. Like, see, that's why, that's why, that's why you can't get blessed. Because as soon as the idea of an instruction comes before them, they already made up in their mind. Psh, I ain't doing that. I ain't doing that. No, psh, let, 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 let the preacher ask for a certain amount of money. I ain't finna put that in there. And you, you wonder why you ain't never got that amount. Because God didn't know you would give it. Look at your neighbor and tell him it's all about willingness. It's all, it's all about the willingness to do it. It's a, it's a, every now and then you ought to tell God, Lord, if I had a boat, I'd let you ride. If, 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 if you give it to me, I'll be sure to give it back to you because willingness is the seed for blessedness. And when Jesus steps on his boat, Peter looks at him and just keeps washing his nets until Jesus says, thrust me out into the water a little further so that I can do what I need to do. And when Jesus is done speaking, he looks at Peter and says, now, Take the boat out into the, into the deep area. Which means this. Please don't tear up Ansley. God already made up in his mind he was going to bless him. He had already made up in his mind I'm talking about while Jesus is teaching Bible study on the boat. In the back of his mind, he's saying, boy, I'm going to bless you. Ooh, I, I got to bless you because you just did what most people would not have done. Mm -hmm. Because it's one thing us don't play about is our stuff. Preach to there I am. Ooh, you don't, you don't play about your stuff. Some of y'all got the kind of car. Don't want nobody in it. You ain't getting nobody the keys to it. You, you, you don't play about your stuff. Let, let, let one of your children be done wore one of your old t-shirts and you ready to go off. Did I say anything to you about using my t-shirt? When it come to your stuff, you don't want nobody touching it. But the fact that Jesus didn't even ask him and stepped on the boat, then he turns to the owner of the boat and says, push me out in the water in your boat. And Peter peacefully was willing to do it in the back of Jesus' mind the whole time he's teaching. Soon as I get a benediction, I promise you I'm going to bless you, boy. Boy, I promise you, you, you didn't have me blessing you on your agenda, but I had me blessing you on my agenda because you were willing to do something that the average person would not do. You see, if you keep doing average stuff, you're going to keep getting average stuff. The reason some of you are blessed beyond measure is because God can trust you to do what everybody else in your family won't do. I'm preaching better than y'all saying amen. That's why you got the blessing that everybody else keep begging you for because they were not willing to sacrifice the way that you were willing to sacrifice. So as soon as Jesus finishes, he turns to Peter and says, now that I'm done with your boat, and you didn't trip about the fact that I used it. Because had you tripped about me using your boat, that would have been the definition of flunking the test. Flunking the blessing test. Because had you said something, had you said something, and this is just me, this is just me if I was Jesus. Had Peter said something to me about using his boat, if he had said, you ain't asked me, could you use my boat? You know what I would have said to him? I would have said, you ain't asked me, could your boat be on my water? That's why you better be careful. 
That's why you better be careful with your little stuff you got. That's why you better be careful with your little job you got. That's why you better be careful with your little money you got. Because as soon as you look at God and tell him what's yours, he can look right back at you and tell you what belongs to him. All I'm saying is praise God for your house, but I'm the one that created land. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness there until you might can show me the deeds to your address, but show me the deeds to the universe. Only God got them in his hand. So Peter uses peaceful willingness. You can always tell when God's got a blessing that you don't have room enough to receive when you are peacefully willing to let him use it. This is the part I couldn't wait to get to, y'all. When I was practicing in the mirror yesterday, this is the part I couldn't wait to get to. I got to practice. He then tells Peter, thrust the boat further into the deep, which means he already knew something that Peter didn't know he knew. He knew that Peter was washing his nets from a long night of fishing, but it wasn't no fish. That's, I feel kind of sad for Peter because it looked like to me, if you're washing your nets because they're dirty from dropping it in and out of the water trying to catch fish, I would, I would have hoped that after all that work, you had something to show for it. But he washing, he washing dirty nets with no fish. That, that, that's, that's just like, you know, I don't mind washing the jersey after I played in the game, but you got to clean your jersey and you ain't even get to play. That's bad, bro. That's bad. That's bad. Just, you just rolled the pine the whole game and, and you got to wash this thing. And you washing the jersey saying to yourself, I ain't even play. He's washing the net saying, I didn't even catch anything. And Jesus knew that he hadn't caught anything. And so he says, lunch out into the deep. Here's number two. Here's number two. You got to make sure you get this. If you want a blessing that you're going to need help with, Number two is, write this down, and let's go ahead and put this one on the screen. I see a profound whatever. Write it, I'm gonna explain it to you. It's a profound whatever. Peter looks at Jesus and says, Master, we've toiled all the night. All night we've been fishing. I'm tired. You didn't use my boat now. I done pushed it out into the water. You done, done your Bible study. You gave it a benediction. All right, now let's, let's, let's chill. Let's, let's go on about our business. I've toiled all the night. There is nothing more devastating, Jesus, than having had tried only for somebody to tell you to go right back and do the same thing that hadn't been working. I've been there. I I've done that. I I've given up on that. It didn't work. Now I have to find myself being content with the fact that it didn't work. Don't, don't re-trigger my pain by making me repeat something that I borderline regret. Please don't put me back in the same position again. I, I've given up on having a business because it failed every time. Now you're telling me to do it again? I've given up on love. Every relationship I'm in, it just turns out. I have, I'm content with being by myself. Now you're telling me, do it again. I'm content with not having children. 
At this point in my life, I'm good. And now you're telling me, do it again. That's the definition of insanity. Doing the same thing, same way, over and over again, but expecting different results. You're asking me to do something that makes no sense to me because I've toiled all night long. And if you had noticed Jesus, it's daytime now. As an expert fisherman, we fish at night because where we are, where we live, it get real hot during the day. The fish don't come up. So we fish at night and they're more apt to come up to where the water is and it's easier to catch. Had I been Jesus, I would have said, well, you did it the regular way when the fish were up at the top and you still didn't catch nothing. But that's a story for another day. And Jesus says, launch into the deep. That's why I told you to launch into the deep because they're not up here. They're down there. Watch what Peter says to Jesus, and this is going to be the turning point of your life for the next six months. Are you ready for it? You better hear, hear me today. He says, at your word, I'm going to do it. Meaning, the only reason I'm going to do this it's because you're telling me to do it. I swear to God and I ain't supposed to swear. If it wasn't you, I wouldn't do this. If, if it wasn't your voice, I'm telling you I'd be at the house sitting on the couch right now. If it wasn't you telling me to do this, I promise you I wouldn't be doing it. it, it I don't care how many people are for it or against it. If, if it wasn't your voice, I wouldn't make this move in my life. I would not do this. It's, it's, it's too complicated. It's bringing me too much pain, too much sorrow because I didn't try this all night long. I am washing my nets because I'm done working. But at your word. I'm going to go back and do this. I'm going to try this one more time. And I hear Jesus saying, that's the difference between the first time you did it and this time that you're doing it. The first time you didn't hear from me. <laughs> not only did the first time you not hear from me, but you got to remember, you're obeying my command after letting me use your boat. You can't let me use your boat and I not fill it up with fish. If there's anything in your life that's empty, all you got to do is let God use it. And God says, you can never let me borrow something without me giving it back to you better than the way that you gave it. I promise you, if you give your marriage to him, he'll give it back to you better than the way you gave it to him. If you give your problem to him, he'll give it back to you better than the way you gave it. If you give your job situation to him, he'll give it back to you better than the way. If you give your children to him, He'll give them back to you better than the way you gave you When you gave them your kids, they were crazy. They were talking back to you. But when you give them to him and you give them back to you, they'll be seated and clothed and in their right mind, well-behaved, well-mannered. They'll be making straight A's in school because he always gives it back better to you than the way you put it in his hands. That's why every now and then you got to give God a profound whatever. I'm not talking about an average whatever, but a profound whatever. I'm talking about God. This don't make no sense to me. But if it makes sense to you, I'm going to do it. Lord, I can't see where I'm going, but as long as you can see, I'll keep on walking with my eyes closed. Lord, nobody in my family has ever done anything like this. But if you tell me that I can accomplish it, I'll go on and do it. You telling me to sit at the table, I ain't got no money, I ain't got no damn 
down payment. I ain't got good credit. But if you're telling me I can leave with it, I'm going to just walk on in here. I don't have the degree. I don't have the experience. I ain't got no kind of education. I ain't never worked in a field like this. But if you're telling me that the job is mine, I'm going to go in here, put on my nice little outfit. I'm going to walk in with a smile on my face. I'm nervous on the inside. I ain't going to lie. But if you told me that the job is mine, when I sit down, I believe by faith that I'm going to find favor with whoever it is that's sitting across this table for me. And you're going to bless me with what my eyes haven't seen, what my ears haven't heard, what my heart haven't felt. You got to give God a profound whatever. If you ain't got no faith, I ain't talking to you. But for the 12 of you in here that know that if I'm crazy enough to trust them, he's crazy enough to come through, you ought to throw up your hand and shout, do it, Jesus. profound whatever, the kind of whatever that don't make no kind of sense to be saying if you say it I'm gonna do it so he says at, at your word at your word I'm gonna go and do this and Peter takes his net goes out into the deep Let's sit down to catch fish as he did all night. And when he grabbed the net, to pull it back up again. Up, oh, Jesus! I pray God to give you one of them. Up, oh, Jesus! For your obedience, I pray God to give you a oh Jesus. For, for your faithfulness and willingness before 2024 over, I pray God to give you a oh Jesus. I'm going to need somebody to come in. Now, now you, you got to get this. You got to get this. It ain't the main point of the story, but it's a major point. Because when he grabbed it and started to pull it, the blessing was so big that it break the net. All right, all right. I wasn't going to say this, but I got to say this because it's got to help you spiritually. Jesus ain't just giving blessings, he's teaching lessons. You got to go back and read it. You got to go back and read it. Jesus' instructions, Miss Shaw, to, to Peter was this. He said, let down your nets. Read it. He said, let down your nets because he said let down your nets here's the mistake that peter made y'all didn't see it that's why i'm here to show it to you he let down his net jesus said let down your nets plural because jesus knew, when jesus tell you take your nets it's because he's planning to fill every one of them. You took a net to a next party and you wonder why you broke. You wonder why the net break because one net ain't gonna be able to carry nets worth of fishes. If you just gonna get some fish, you can use a net. But when you're about to catch fishes, you need more than one which means he said I'm gonna take you at your word but he didn't take him all the way at his word w without being too gangster let me say it like this a ain't no such thing as halfway crook partial obedience is total disobedience so Jesus could have withdrawn the blessing but he had already made up in his mind he was going to bless him anyway. Even if I got to learn what not to do while God is doing what God is going to do, won't he give you another chance to get your nets together? Look, look at your neighbor and say, get your nets together. Get your, get your nets together. But don't you wait until the blessing get here. God said, I want you to prepare for it. 
I want you to already start working on your communication skills because the place that I'm getting ready to take you, you're going to have to be in leadership. And you're going to have to know how to communicate. and You're going to have to know how to talk to people. And, and I already need you to be going to the other side of town because you ain't just going to be dealing with black folk where I'm taking you. You're going to be dealing with other cultures and ethnicities. And you might need to learn a little bit of Spanish along the way so you can talk to Jesus and warning them because y'all are going to have to be able to talk with each other. You, you might have to change your clothes game. You can't just wear jeans and t-shirts all the time. You're going to have an office so you're going to have to put on a suit and a tie every now and then. You're going to be sitting at the table with some big wigs. And you're going to have to talk like you got some sense in your life. And you can't just use for shizzle my nizzle as your number one dominant language of origin. But sometimes you're going to have to make your subjects and your verbs agree. Look at your neighbor and say, get your nets together. Y'all ain't talking to nobody. If you don't believe me, you ain't got to say nothing. But for those of y'all that believe that God's got nets in your future, look at them and shout, get your nets together. Where God is taking you, you ain't going to have to drive yourself. So you got to learn how to sit in the back seat and look cute in the back seat. You, you got to learn how to cross your legs right. You got to learn how to put your ankle across your other ankle. Go on and get you a lap clock because you're going to have to sit in the front and everybody going to have their eyes on you. Go, go on and get you that one beautician that know how to get that wig right, that know how to get your hair. Because where God is taking you, you can't be doing no raps. You can't be going in here with no bunnies on top of your head. The devil is alive. That thing got to be fried, dyed, and laid to the side every time. Even if you run the piggly wiggly, you're going to have to dress up to go in there. Because ain't no telling who going to see you while you are going free. High five, two people in the show. Get your nets together. It's going to be bigger than anything you've ever seen before in your life. Your clientele getting ready to increase. Your territory getting ready to enlarge. If you feel how I feel, look at somebody like you got the Holy Ghost. And tell them I don't want no mediocre. I did that in the last chapter of my life. I don't want no mediocre money. I don't want no mediocre ministry. I don't want no mediocre marriage. I don't want no mediocre relationship. Everything God gonna do is gonna be big for me. I know I'm robbing this phrase, but I need to say it. Tell your neighbor, get ready, 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 get ready. Let's go home. Because he dropped a net and that net break but the good thing is at least Lord have mercy at least he had some help oh oh because here's number three after I see this profound whatever I see number three, Peter becomes a prolific witness. Prolific, plenteous. Watch this, plentiful. He witnesses something that is plenteous. Didn't I start off by telling you how awesome God is? I'm showing it to you again. God is so dope. Watch this. What Peter couldn't do all night. Jesus did in a matter of moments. Watch this. He toiled all night, caught nothing, 
Now he's toiling trying to maintain what he got. And it was so big, he said, oh, I need help with this good problem. So he called out to John. He called out to James. He called out to what the Bible says, his partners. And they had to rush over from their boats to go over and help Peter with what was happening on his boat. Um, let me say it like this, and if it hurts your feelings, I don't even care. Oh, because it's designed to help your life. If what you are doing, you can do it all by yourself, it ain't big enough yet. I pray that God will enlarge your blessings so much so that you're going to have to hire somebody who going to have time enough to help you with your vision. I, I pray that it be so big that you realize, God, I need somebody to help me carry this load. I, I, I need somebody to stop what they're doing to help me with what it is that you are doing in my life so, so that now it'll never be any question again for the rest of my life what it is that you are able to do. Let me say this. God can bless you in one day and what he do for you one day can carry you for the rest of your day so i see peter i see john i see james who were fishermen in their own right but they had to come together to help peter with what was going on in his life because all of his nets started breaking and when Peter and James and John get on the boat. The Bible says that the boat began to sink. That means God gave them a blessing that made them nervous. How you going to bless me with all these fishes? Don't you understand how gravity works? I hear Jesus saying, I created the laws of gravity. Th that means that if I can create gravity, I can cause gravity to be subject to my power and authority. Somebody in this room, you feel like you're going under. But God told me to tell you, since I created the gravity, I'm going to make sure you make it to the shore without the thing you're in going under. Shake your neighbor's hand and say, neighbor, sometimes I feel like somebody's watching me. It's like a jungle sometimes. Sometimes I wonder how I keep from going under. But I find your neighbor and tell a neighbor I know why I don't go under. Because this joy that I have, the world didn't give it. And the world can't take it. This blessing I got, God's going to see to it that I can use my blessing. And the water can't drown. The fire came from it, and no weapon for the gets me shall be able to prosper. Can you high five somebody and tell them, name of if God gave it to you, go on and use it. If God blessed you with it, he's going to let you enjoy it. I don't care if you're 80 years old. If God gave it to you, he's going to give you some time to enjoy your blessing. And when they finally got back and sat at the shore, watch what Peter said. He said, Lord, leave me. Lord, get away from me. I can't believe you blessed somebody, a wretch like me, to have all of this is there anybody in the room today that can praise God because
because he blessed you and you didn't deserve it. He blessed you and you didn't qualify. He blessed you and you know if it had not been for the Lord on your side, find somebody, high five your neighbor and tell a neighbor, excuse me, I'm getting ready to give God a ridiculous praise. I'm getting ready to give God a crazy praise. If they ask you why, just look around and tell a neighbor, you don't know like I know what the Lord did for me. But look at it, all these fishes, I didn't deserve it. All these blessings, I didn't qualify. And I hear Peter say, get away from me. Do you know what that means? God blessed him so good that Peter whew, got embarrassed. Lord Jesus, why you do that? Lord Jesus, I can't believe it. Lord Jesus, the blessing's so big. I gotta give song to somebody else. I gotta share it with somebody else. Shake your name by their hand. Shake them and rock them. Rock them and shake them. Shake them and rock them. Rock them and shake them. And say, neighbor, when God bless me big, look out for me. I'm going to find you and put some in your hand. I ain't used to having this much stuff. I'm not used to this much favor. I'm not used to this much money. I'm not used to this much power. But my eyes have not seen. My ears have not heard. My heart has not felt what God get ready to do. Is there anybody here? Tell your neighbor you don't need help with it. I'm gonna need help with this one. My peaceful willingness and my desire to tell him whatever you say do, I hear God saying, I promise you I'm gonna bless you. you for your faithfulness I'm gonna bless you I I, pro I promise you I promise you start getting ready you can't take your current mentality to your next season did you hear what I just said you cannot take your current mentality to your next season you're going to sabotage it take your net your capacity has been too limited you got comfortable with tens you can't take a tens mentality into the hundreds category you got comfortable with hundreds. Now you got to position yourself for the thousands. You thought the thousands was the cap. Tens of thousands is next. You can't take a net for tens of thousands. Oh, you didn't know the numbers keep rising, did you? Because after that, there are hundreds of thousands. So you got to shift again because you can't take tens of thousands mindset into hundreds of thousands arenas. 
own. You, you thought the epitome was to be a six-figure Negro. You didn't know that numbers keep going. After six digits, there's another digit, seven of them. You can't take the hundreds of thousands mentality into the millions category. You got to take your nets. Because when God says, I'm going to bless you, this feel good coming out. When God gets ready to bless you, he don't bless you based upon your mind. See, if, if I'm throwing a party and I'm going to put somebody over the food, I'm not going to put nobody over the food that don't like to cook and don't know how to eat. Because we're going to have all these little finger sandwiches and these little small crackers. I, I don't need little girl cooking for me. I need grown woman cooking for me. Because I don't want you blessing me based upon your mind. You don't eat nothing. You eat that bird stuff. Just a salad. Get on out of here with your salad eating stuff. If you don't cook for me, you got to cook for me to the point that when I finish, I'll be like, you got some more of them butter beans? You got some more of them black eyed peas? Well, I say, yeah, we got a whole lot more. That's my kind of cook right there. God said, I'm not going to bless you based upon your little mind. I'm going to bless you based upon my mind. What is his mind? Now unto him who is able to do exceeding abundantly to three above all that you ask or think. That means if you can think it, it's still too small. Get ready to take your nets with you. I told you I was going to give you the main idea. After Jesus blesses Peter with all of these multitudes of fishes. And Peter says, Lord, I'm a sinful man. I don't deserve this. I'm embarrassed. <laughs> you, you've been embarrassingly good to me. I don't want people to think I'm that holy. That's why I got this stuff. But Jesus says that was all a prototype, a vision or an image of something that I have greater for your life because I dare you to read 8, 9, and 10. Jesus says to him, from now on, you'll be catching men. I'm going to do something for you in the natural that is ultimately designed to translate into the spiritual. Which means that when you drop your nets and God lets you see something in the natural, what he's saying is, you can trust me to follow me in the spiritual. Because get this, get this Miss Bunny, and I'm done. As soon as they got all these fishes, cause soon they got all these fishes. Verse 10, I believe it is, says they forsook all and followed him. All these fishes, and he left the fishing business because he understood something. If he can bless my fishing business in one day imagine what he'll do for me if I follow him every day all I'm saying is don't let it stop at the fishes keep following and the same Jesus that did it in the natural with that one time he says I'm the God that can keep doing it over and over and over again I see the help coming in your direction because what God has for you is so major that you won't be able to be a one man or a one woman show can I cover you now in believers prayer father in the name of Jesus I believe you for your word we watched an example today 
Peter peacefully and willingly letting you use his ship for a moment and for his act of obedience you made up in your mind if you let me use your boat I'm going to feel it I pray for anybody in this room that's lacking and empty in any area of their life that if they would give it to you today this day you will begin to feel the area of lack the area of void whatever is missing I pray God that you will become their portion today and when it's all said and done let there be a spiritual lesson behind it that will cause us to follow you all the days of our lives no turning back no turning back in Jesus name amen can you clap your hands one time for his word today do me a favor Hug somebody and tell them congratulations on your next season. I know it hadn't gotten here yet, but I want to congratulate you just in case I don't see you between now and the time you walk through the next door of opportunity. I know I see you a lot, but I might have to text you because you might be traveling and, and you might be out of town a lot. So I know what God got for you. I may not be able to hold on to you like that. So I want to tell you congratulations in advance for what God has in store for your life. Listen, if you're in this room or you're watching us on Facebook and you have not given your life to this Jesus that can make all these things possible, if you've not given your life to him, it's as simple as A, B, C, A. I need to acknowledge I'm a sinner. I need to be saved. B, I need to believe in my heart. C, confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus that God has raised him from the dead. And just like that, you are saved. That's the most important thing. You are, when you're saved, that means when you die, you're not going to hell. That's what salvation means. I have been delivered from the penalty of sin. I've not been delivered from the presence of sin because sin is still present. Paul says, when I have a desire to do good, evil is still present with me. So I need sanctification. Salvation is a one-time ordeal. Sanctification is a process. That's why after you get saved, you need to get in a Bible-believing, Bible-teaching church that can continue to water you with the Word of God. So two invitations. Number one, if you've not accepted Jesus more than anything, do that today. Secondly, if you don't have a church on, if you're not receiving the Word consistently, connect with a ministry today, even if it's not ours. You can let us know, hey, I'm looking for such and such church. We'll help you find and we'll send you over there. I don't mind you riding with one of my friends as long as we're going to the same heaven and as long as we're growing together. But if that's you today, put in the comment section, I received Jesus today within 24 to 48 hours. Myself or someone from our team will reach out to you. If you want to join our church, put that in the comment section. I want to join the FCC. Or you can just text me right now, 205. 6903922 you can call or text that number and say hey I'm giving my life to Jesus or I want to be a part of y'all church man what do I need to do and we'll get you connected and bring you into our fold and into our family we love you so much but God loves you best make a decision for him on today and he'll cause you to have the need to bring all of your nets to the party have you been blessed today by the word say amen one more time amen listen we want to posture and prime ourselves now for the ministry of giving for the ministry of giving for the ministry of giving and we're excited about the opportunity to give listen before you give today i want to encourage you to give big today encourage you to give big today for real for real i want to encourage you to give as big as you possibly can because we started some big things uh over this weekend um we had our team out here working out back to get our um uh set up for our power and all of that and we got to buy some materials this week if we get five to ten thousand dollars over the next two weeks it can drastically change it can drastically change. It can drastically change. I'm talking about the condition with our power and more source and heat and that and all that kind of stuff. So let's try to do at least 5,000 a day. A hundred of us can give 50. 50 of us can give 100. If you can give the 5,000 yourself and you just want to write the check today, go ahead and do that too. It's all cool in the game. I ain't mad at you if you want to do that. But if you would really want to help us out today, let's get a 
big offering today, the biggest one that we've ever had today because we can uh, very, very quickly make some changes. It's already started. The process has already started. So in the next few weeks or so, uh, y'all going to come up in here and then be texting folk, and then we're going to have to let out the nets. As you know, it's so on and forth. Ooh, Lord, it's, it's some heat and some air. And girl, is comfortable in there. Girl, then you had to come early and get a seat. I'm telling you, you know how black folks is. Amen. When conditions get a little better, then we, we you know, we start showing up. But thank y'all for being faithful through the process. Uh, but if you help us over this little hump right here, we are well on our way. And I'm super excited about it. So everybody that can, give as big as you possibly can. Uh, dollar sign number four, future home number two, is the only cash app we have. It's the only cash app we're using. They shut down our other one. For some reason, I still don't understand it, but that's what they did. So we still got our four future home number two for all of our cash app givers. Uh, please give that way. We're also on Givelify. Givelify. Type in the name of our church on the Givelify. We're the only four word Christian center on the planet. So the one that pops up is ours. You can give that way where you can give by cash or by check. Uh, also, Pastor's Love is there available. That's how I eat from week to week. So, for those of you who are willing to share in that regard, appreciate you so very much for doing that. But more than anything, um, we want to try to uh, change our conditions here over the next couple of weeks, for real, for real. It's already started. While y'all was out at the Classic, I was out here up on ladders and all that stuff going up. I ain't get up on the ladder. Somebody else did. I was just watch I was watching them. I was standing at the bottom holding the ladder, making sure they didn't fall all that good stuff so um, but thank y'all so much I can see the light at the end of the tunnel uh, so thank you so much for your giving and for your sharing on today uh, the, we have this one basket up front now this one basket up front thank y'all so very 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 much y'all look good in your pink honor of breast cancer awareness and representing your teens and all of that from the weekend so good to see that's right that's right that's right that's right that's right even though i'm not oh, oh no, somebody dropped that on there okay um yeah i mean they I'm, I'm i'm still a fan of them but you know it just be what it be because they I ain't got much confidence in them right now. I love them though, but they just, you know. They won yesterday and you thought I was gonna click my heels? Nope. They better be LSU and Auburn, then we cool again. <laughs> we better be them too, then we cool again. Then I might keep the coach, other than that, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Has everyone given that desires to give? We don't want you to miss out on opportunity to share in the giving on today. I uh, want to make sure that every seed get in the ground. God bless you. Just Thank you so much for everyone that's given. Everybody that's on Facebook or YouTube, thank you so much for your giving, for your sharing. You're sowing into good ground. You're sowing into good ground. Uh, we bless people around here. We look out for people around here. We thank God none of it happens without you and everything happens at the speed of giving. So thank you all so very, 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 very much. Love y'all. I think that's it. We don't have a giveaway this week, do we? No, 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 no. It's not until November. All right. Thank y'all so much. Let's stand. Again, our media team, music team, everybody that came out over the past two weeks. Thank y'all so much. What's that? Amen. I know that's right. I know that. I love your spirit. I'm telling you. Sure. When they come to church, you know it's finna be on and popping, boy. You can have a horrible sermon. They still gonna push you right there, boy. Make you preach. I'm 40 years old. I thought I stood up on that chair. Like, wait a minute, I'm gonna feel that later. Y'all pushing me too hard. <laughs> Love y'all so much. Father, thank you for what our eyes have seen, what our ears have heard, and what our hearts have felt. Thank you for this worship. Thank you for the witness. Thank you for the word. We bless you for this week that's about to come. We are prepared to receive what you have in store for us. We're not just going to be big physically, but we're going to be big spiritually. People are going to see us and say, what is the light that's shining in you? I want that light. 
and this joy that we have the world didn't give it and we refuse to let the world take it away from us so nobody's gonna get under our skin this week nobody's gonna knock us off our square if anybody is on another page we gonna pray for them until they finally become everything that you would have for them to be and then god until you bring us back again on next week and pray god that you would cover and saturate us with your grace and with your mercy that every need is supplied physically emotionally mentally professionally domestically vulnerably but most of all spiritually that we'll be all that you've called us to be bless every seed sower bless them 100 fold for whatever they've given today for the upbuilding of your kingdom and now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding great joy the king immortal invincible the only wise god be glory majesty dominion and power both now and forevermore and all god's children said amen love y'all take care